all that stuff at you. But mm. the thing that got me is that it was said in the paper that someone said that they're making false claims and they're triggering and they're triggered to be attacked. Why would someone put themselves in a position to be attacked? I don't think that person mm -hmm. will be mentally stable. Mm -hmm. Well, it so, must have been enough people that it got the newspaper's attention. No, probably. I think that's the number. Yeah, you're right. I think the number has gotten the newspaper's attention. But at the end of the day, I don't think there are not rules and there are not policies and procedures in place for LGBTQ community person. I mean, you can't say, okay, when I die, I'm leaving this insurance for my husband. He's not going to get it. When I die, I'm leaving this house, this car, whatever. You have to leave it for a friend. And I guess some people have um, actually, of how they were with their family members, they don't want to leave anything for their family members and they can't leave it for their spouse or their loved ones. So mm -hmm. people are getting out to make a betterment for themselves. And anybody can come to Canada and file refugee once, uh, once you have a, refu a refugee basis claim. Mm -hmm. Now, you, I mean, I, I watched the news a little bit, so I saw a little bit of an uprising in one of the um, parks about the refugees from other places, from Jamaica and all these different kinds of stuff, a few days ago. I really didn't pay much attention to it because I was really busy, but it did catch my attention about people leaving their country in like a migrant situation. And... Um, uh, but I was going to talk to you about that as later on. But um, right now, let's go back to if it, if the news it caught the newspaper's attention. That means either the Canadian government or the Barbados Barbados government are the ones that leak this information to the press because either in coming to Canada, if you're coming in a large a large group of people in from one certain country or just I, let's say one certain region, mm -hmm. I'm sure the government would know that. Yeah, I think it's a period over the year because they have the time frame from this period to that period. So it's a time frame. I think they said about 43 people between a time frame to a time frame, if I'm mm -hmm. correct. So it's a time frame that they're looking at. I guess they're looking at the numbers and why people are leaving. So if you have to leave a country to make better for yourself, why are you going to stay in a, in a country where you have the land of opportunity or other areas to make opportunity? I mean, things are getting more difficult. Cost of living is going to be high. I mean, so if you have an opportunity to get out, to get out. If, mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if you want to migrate to Canada, for whatever the case may be, this is a decision that you have to make because there are certain stipulations. You can't go back to your country unless you become a Canadian citizen, right? Mm -hmm. So if you file a refugee-based claim. So you need to make up in your mind that this is something that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the what are the pros of coming to Canada for these... <laughs> Of coming to Canada, yes, you you will have an opportunity to get a job of because facing working in Barbados or I don't there's no rules or regulations for people like trans people to actually be eventually you're gonna to have to use the male bathroom. So how can you look like this and you're going in a male bathroom to use a male bathroom? So I mean you will you will find employment, you'll be able to live your life more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, you will have opportunities. Of course, you can um, you can make betterment for yourself and your family. So there's a lot of pros and cons in common. So we're speaking about trans refugees or just refugees in general? I'm speaking about refugees in general. Okay. Now, refugees in general. Now, what are the cons of coming to Canada for these people? The cons of coming to Canada is because you can't go back to your country. You're going to have to learn to integrate into a whole new culture that you're different from because you're coming from a different culture into a different culture. Because when I got here, I was like, okay, this is a whole different ball game. So mm -hmm. yes, at first it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. But eventually as you integrate into the Canadian culture, you will find that, okay, this is not so bad. You, you will learn ways to adapt. And there are always agencies and organizations and out there that can help you and put you on your feet and guide you in the right way that you want to go. Okay. Now, what if these cases are refused? Well, then, unfortunately, you have to go back to your country. Okay. And these mm -hmm. cases are actually refused if they are deemed, because 
when you come, you go, you become a refugee, then you become a conventional refugee, then you become a permanent resident, then you become a citizen. So with that being said, if your case is refused, that means the member at that time find some, find that you can go back to your country to live there comfortably because you have to write a story. And all these events that happen to you in your life, I mean, you have to get support letters. You have to, if there are any police reports, you have to bring your police reports. You have to get, um, if there are any newspaper clippings, because obviously Barbados only have one newspaper, so <laughs> you can get that newspaper. <laughs> that newspaper. So yeah, and you get supporting letters from family, friends, you can get supporting letters from any person that you know. So with all, it's called a PIF. So with all of that, all of these supporting letters um, based on your claim, because you can claim persecution for many other things, religion, all that stuff. But if you're claiming persecution because of your sexuality, you have to get supporting letters. You have to write a story really leading right up to your age right now. So it's like a big fact. So if that okay. is something that you have to go over with your lawyer. Your lawyer walk you through that, all of that. And then you submit it. So when you submit it, then you have a hearing. So you go before you with you and your lawyer, you go before um, the member. So the member goes over your story and they ask you questions and all of that. So that's how it is. Now, just, just one question. At the beginning, before you leave Barbados, I'm sure they ask a lot of questions to lawyers that are already in Barbados, I would think. No, they don't. Oh, they don't, they just- No. You get on a plane and you come to Canada and say, hey, I'm, for, I'm here to file refugee. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh okay, okay. I, <laughs> I never knew that how it would work. But you don't ask any questions to any lawyers, no. So now when they get here and they say they want refugee status, what, what does the Canadian, what, what's the Canadian government's reaction? Well, in my experience, okay, in my experience, when I came here, I said, well, I'm here to file refugee. They took me to a room. They took away my Barbados passport. They gave me an ID, a refugee ID. They questioned me on why I want to flee my country. Um, do I fear going back to my country? If I was supposed to go back to my country, what do I think would happen? And they just write a short gist. Then they give you a... I, that was everything. So I guess things have changed up a bit, but based on that, they give you your refugee ID, but now they give you a refugee ID and you spend like four hours at the back of immigration in the airport the, and stuff like that. So it's a long process be, behind there. Then after that, you're released. They give you 30 days to find, to submit your story to um, your lawyer. They give you stipulations that you have to get a medical, then you have to find a lawyer, all of that. So that's when you actually get off the plane, you say you're here to file refugee, they pull you aside and they put you in a room. So let's just say a person is trans and don't look necessarily realistic. They just sort of look, you know, sometimes how trans women can look uh -huh. and coming to Canada. Now we understand the hardship of, of the trans life and transitioning and all of that. Now, a lot of times, because I hear this a lot online about, like you said earlier, they think that you're faking it just so you can get out of the country and maybe come to another country to make your life a little bit better. But what does, why is it so hard to prove to the Canadian government that you are who you say you are, whether you're trans, you're a refugee with a real asylum acclaim, acclaim um, refugee claim, or you're just a person faking? Why would they say this if it hadn't happened in the past? Because honestly, you're gonna have people, because I guess they're kind of mixed up because of stories that they heard that straight guys are coming and filing refugee mm -hmm. and getting through, and they're not, they're only doing it because they want to live a better life. I mean, to each his own. If that's a path that you want to go down, that's entirely up to you and your immigration hearing. So mm -hmm. I believe these are stories that people have been hearing. So as you know, words travel because Barbados is such a small 
a small country. So if I say mm -hmm. one thing to another person, it spreads. So I believe that's where the con the um the assumption occurs that people are finding it are straight men or straight people are coming and filing refugee, but they're not really straight. But at the end of the day, you still have to prove it. You have to write stories. I mean, mm. are you going to sit down at where you have to be a writer, a very good writer to say you went through an experience? Because my experience as a straight person, in my experience as a um, LGBTQ community member, a trans person, non-binary is going to be completely different. So when you present that story, of course, these people are trained to, to see these things. If well, they're fiction or non-fiction. Mm -hmm. Is Barbados considered a country that is is in turmoil or 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 or, or war or whatever it is because doesn't immigration really no it's not that? considered a turmoil i mean can it all depends on a person's and how they feel and how they want to i mean a trans woman okay what do you think a trans woman would be able to find a government job and well, work no, comfortable no, I, 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 i'm just thinking you know i mean i can understand a trans woman's position Easy, yeah, then I can understand a regular refugee or a uh, 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 or a heterosexual man pretending. I can understand trans women because we can visibly pretty much tell this person's life. Okay. Sometimes visually, because if you're in Barbados, you wouldn't have the resources that girls in America or in Canada would have to get like the hormones or the doctors that you need to look, you know, necessarily the right way or be the person to help you be the person that you want it to be. So when you when you look at the big picture, the Canadian government could look and say, well, you know, Barbados has hormone pills. They, they don't. That's a thing. They don't. They only take birth control, oh. which is this is not good. <laughs> I can't talk. I did that. <laughs> I did that in one year. All of us, all of us did it. Don't <laughs> worry. Back <laughs> in the beginning, way back in the days, way, way back in the days, all of us. So no, yeah. there's no medical support for it. So as I said, there's no medical support for it. So. They, they can't say that. So that is why it would be much easier for them to migrate to Canada mm -hmm. to have that transition complete. And even as a non-binary person, and then as a person, you have to hide your gender. You have to hide your feelings. Even if you're a guy, you're walking down, you're a gay guy, why because me, you still have to hide it up because mm -hmm. you don't want people to know. So, so what do you suggest? So what what do you what do you suggest should to the refugees that are coming here? And let how do them you come if they want to? I mean, if you're harsh, why are people still calling them and let them come? If they want to come, that's their choice. You can't tell a person what to do with their life. If they want to come because they want to get out, they're not comfortable living there. Well, because what's the problem? Other people mm -hmm. migrate. Well, if it was a straight person migrating for work because there's no work in the country or the person is finding, I should say correction, if a person find it, find it hard to get a job, the unemployment line is high and there are not jobs there. And another person say, okay, let me migrate to America. Let me migrate to England. Let me migrate to Canada to find another job. Would it be still a problem or would it cause so much attention? Mm. So I think they're being selective on what they're doing. What is the issue? What's the problem? If they want to migrate because of their sexuality, because of persecution, because of religion, because of whatever, let them come. Okay. Now, with all that being said, how do you get the refugees or the people they see are fleeing Barbados? Where do they get this help? Where do they get these lawyers? Where do they get these medical? Okay. What happens is that when you come, you find a lawyer. So you actually call legal aid. Okay. So legal aid actually take care of it from there. All right. So now, that's how it okay. So now, would do, so where do you think the people should go if they're refused? Well, if they refuse, they can fly humanitarian and see if they get through on that. That's a whole different part and a whole different ballgame. So they can fall a humanitarian, or if they want to go back, the choice is theirs. It okay. all depends on the individual and what they want to do because we can't force someone. Okay, we can only give them their options. So, and just educate them on their options. Once you educate them on their options, then it's up to them to choose what they want to do. Okay, now I just want to ask this from your point of view.
What mm -hmm. are you, what are you hearing from the Barbados government and the Canadian government? What's in the air that you're getting that's coming back to you? Well, actually, I'm not really hearing anything per se. Mm -hmm. It's just that in my everyday feel is that I meet people from all walks of life. And I meet people that come to Canada from different come to Canada for different reasons for refugee. And I think mm -hmm. they are valid claims. I think that if a person, for me, whether they come from Barbados or they come from a different country, whatever the country they come from, I think basically that person has the right to come to make a better life for themselves. And mm -hmm. I think I'm thankful to the Canadian government for letting them come and mm -hmm. integrate into a culture. Although, yes, we may say this person is. Barbadian, this person is Jamaican, this person is Bahamian, this person is this, and they should be back in their country. But at the end of the day, they're making themselves free. They're making themselves mm -hmm. that they are happy. They can live their life comfortable. And when a person is comfortable, it's so much a person can do and so much a person can grow, then stay somewhere where they have to fight and they have to hide their feelings and then they get depressed, they get anxiety, they're not happy. And then hey, so you prefer to have a suicidal rate or what would you prefer to have? Okay. Now, my last question that I want to ask is, why is it that these individuals are, I, I understand a better life, but where did the desperation you think came from? I mean, most refugees no matter which country you come from, come out of a desperate situation. Whether you're trans, we understand that naturally. But when you're heterosexual or you're, or, or you're in the middle and you can't find a job and all these different kinds of things. Like I said before, we understand the trans flight because it's much mm -hmm. more difficult. But as normal refugees, you would think that the economy in Barbados would turn around or you know, things might look a little bit better in certain situations. And well, how do you how do you say to the government these people are using fake claims? Because if you can find a history on people in Barbados, whether they have children or they had girlfriends or in high school they had girlfriends, why all of a sudden now have they I mean, I understand trying to get into another country, you'll do whatever you need to do. Um, but my question is, where, why is this, is this all coming from the same place that these 43 migrants try to- think, I think it's coming from, I think they look at rejection and who have, who have gotten their claim rejected. So if 10 people have gotten their claim rejected, I think the assumption is that they got rejected because their claims are not valid or they are their fake claims. But there are so many reasons why your claim can be uh, rejected. It doesn't necessarily have to be fake. It doesn't necessarily have to be, um, as they say, under the assumption of fakeness. But however, there are different reasons. And they won't tell you because they won't tell you, tell the public why the claim was rejected because that has nothing to do with the public. That is between immigration and the claimant, the refugee claimant, to understand. And for myself, I can't even speak on that because that will be out of context. So with that being said, I guess it's just an assumption. Just like how they said, for instance, that you can go to, um, you can travel back to Barbados, whatever the case may be. Yes, you can travel back to Barbados, but when you're a refugee, well, this is my old travel document, you want to travel, it says a travel document right here, right? Mm -hmm. In it, it says you can go anywhere in the world, but it also says right here, valid for travel anywhere except Barbados. Do you see it? Oh, I can see it, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it says valid for travel anywhere. It's a passport. It has your picture, it has everything. Look, That's I'll right. I have my full name, look. You see, it's like a picture mm -hmm. right there, and it's a travel document, but you can go anywhere except Barbados. So when these people are saying, why am I going to take the claim? Because if immigration have my passport, when I become a permanent resident, yes, some people get back their passport or what the case may be. Like I became a permanent resident. I didn't even bother to get back my passport. My passport's still there. I'm a citizen now. Yes, I can get back my passport. That's not a problem. That's not the issue. But why would I take a pass, my baby, my Barbados passport, travel to another country, 
for instance, Trinidad, and then use this to travel, and then you, uh, sorry, use and then use this to travel to Trinidad, and then use my Barbados passport to travel to Barbados. Mm -hmm. Then when immigration pulled me up in the system, they're going to say, "Why am I doing with two mm -hmm. means of travel?" Right. So yeah. you're putting yourself into trouble. So after you fought so hard to get here, you're integrating, you become a permanent resident. Are you going to do these things to affect your citizenship? Mm -hmm. So when people speak, I think they they need to actually understand the process beforehand yes. that they're talking about. Okay, so let's leave it there. I think that if you if you 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 recommend people coming from Barbados and are in the immigration system already in Canada looking for a lawyer or looking for a support system, where do they go? They can go to the 519. They can go to the Black Coalition Against AIDS Prevention. Hey, we're here to help. Okay. <laughs> That's their work. And you know that there are other organizations they can have, they can go to. And of course, we are there to help them and guide them through the process and help them stay in the country. Wonderful. Now, you know, this was really interesting. You notice we we didn't stumble very much. So it was a very interesting. I know, we did it. We just it very walked off topic. each other. So what we'll do is um, we'll just say to our audience out there, this is, you want to say your name? My name is Katanya. Okay. This is Katanya um, from Black Cap, the Black Coalition for AIDS Prevention. And she is here to help educate refugees from Barbados and other islands or other places to let them know that there is a support system and um, for you, if you plan on immigrating to Canada, she can And help if you, you do plan to immigrate on Canada, just shoot me, just find me and shoot me a note. I'll be happy to educate you so that your transition and your migration can actually be smooth. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. That is fabulous. So thank you today. Um, Katanya for coming on to our show, the Stephanie Stevens Show, uh, and we will get the word out, and um, and we will be in talks very soon. So thank you for all that you're you do. welcome, and no worry, Cap and Legal Aid for helping people make their lives better. Yep, and also a big shout out to the Canadian government. Thank you so much for helping those that are in need. Thank you. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Bye-bye.